over the course of a season, a coach can get a lot of feedback uh, from parents, uh, other coaches or directors, both positive and negative. And sometimes that can get overwhelming for coaches, um, especially when the feedback, whether it's positive or negative, can be very different uh, depending on who's providing it. Um, and not different because it's coming from a parent or a coach um, or a coach or another director, different because everybody has different opinions on you know, what great coaching or good coaching looks like. Of course, there are things that I think everyone could agree on that shouldn't happen. Uh, but there are a lot of things that even if you get uh, some of the best coaches in the world together in a room, they're going to not uh, agree on every single thing um, in terms of best practices, um, you know, on the field when you're coaching. So as a coach, when you get all this information, this feedback, sometimes it can be conflicting um, and it can be hard to... Uh, hard and frustrating, frankly, you know, to know, you know, what to do next or, you know, if you're doing what is right or what is wrong. Um, and there's a couple reasons for this. One, you know, as a, as everyone has pretty much experience in life, everyone has been coached, um, you know, growing up as a kid, um, and even as, you know, a parent or mentor, everyone's been coached in some way. So everyone has their own opinion on what works best. And often that's, based on what's worked best for them. So everyone, someone has a skewed opinion or a biased opinion of what great coaching looks like because often it's what worked for them. You know, if they growing up had, you know, really tough, you know, quote unquote drill sergeant type of coach and they felt that's what helped them, you know, excel and push them to do well, they're probably going to feel that that type of coaching is a little more appropriate. If another person had a coach like that and, didn't gel well with them at all and felt like, you know, they regressed under that coach's leadership, they're going to have a different opinion on that. Um, same thing as a coach who maybe not vocal enough. You know, over the course of coaching, if you've been around the game enough, you hear a wide range of um, opinions on all of these matters, you know, how information should be delivered, how coaching, um, you know, should be handled at every level. So, if you're a coach and you're getting this feedback, the most important thing for me is to really look at the feedback, look at it through the eyes of the person giving it to you, um, look at it through the eyes of possibly the players, um, you know, and how they might be, you know, receiving, you know, the information in your coaching style, and ask yourself the question, is this the best approach to help them achieve their goals? Because that's always what we're trying to do. We're always trying to do our best to help the players achieve their best. That's you know what coaches do. Um, you know, so you have to make that evaluation and that decision for yourself. And every coach is different. Um, and that's the other most important part. You can't be a chameleon as a coach. Um, you know, in terms of your personality, the way you approach the game, the way you see the game, everybody is different. So everybody will coach differently. Um, you know, even the best coaches in the world, as I said before, all coach a little bit differently, all see things a little bit differently. So you have to do the same um, and, and really just evaluate what you're doing and what you're doing to try to help the players. Uh, when you try to be chameleon and, you know, do things that um, don't really fit, you know, who you are, then it is not good for anyone. You're uncomfortable coaching. It's probably going to be less effective than it was before. Um, but at the same time, you also have to recognize when you're doing something that's not working or doing something that is not beneficial to the players and then find a new way or a new approach that might work better. So I know we don't sometimes don't like getting feedback, especially negative from parents or other coaches or directors, but the best thing to do is always take that information and look at it. Um, have a good, honest, open dialogue with the person giving it to you. Don't be upset by it. And at, at, at the end of the day, no matter what you do with it, I think you always become a better coach. I've had great conversations with parents, other coaches and directors over the years who have helped me become a better coach by providing feedback. Whether I completely agreed with it or not, what I did was I would be able to take that information and look how I can apply it to make myself more effective for the players. Because at the end of the day, that's always the point. It's not necessarily who's right or wrong. It, the idea is about who is doing what is best for the players you're working with. So um, just wanted to share that because I hear this a lot from coaches that 
there's a lot of conflicting views and they get a lot of different feedback or you know they have one parent on the sideline who's asking for this another parent on the sideline looking for something completely different and that becomes a very hard line to walk for coaches um, you know obviously you can't make everyone happy all the time but at the same time you want to be sensitive and and make sure that you know parents and other coaches are, are hearing um, feel like you're hearing what they're saying and and, and being um, you know sensitive to it and um, you know, at least trying to understand where they're coming from. So definitely be open to feedback, open to criticism, um, open to different ways of coaching and approaching it. But again, always look at it through um, who you are as a coach and what you're trying to achieve in, 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 in a way that will best help your players have success in the field.